With all those lithium devices you have under your van that require charging, would it pay you to have a smoke alarm under your bed just in case one becomes faulty? It may give you extra time to get out. Have you ever seen a lithium battery fire stay safe? And that question comes from Mike Cox. Mike, yes, I've seen lots of videos on YouTube about lithium fires and they are pretty horrifying. But let me assure you that lithium battery fires are quite rare and for those batteries to catch fire it's usually because of one of two reasons. And the main reason is they overheat or the other reason is it's a manufacturing defect. And of course there's always user misuse or abuse. I've seen a lot of videos of mobile phones catching fire but usually they're on the dashboard of a car. And that's why mobile phones cut out when they reach a certain temperature is to safeguard the battery inside them as do cameras. You'll notice that a lot of video cameras will stop recording when they reach a certain temperature. They will cut off. There are a lot of safety features built into most lithium batteries. But if it is really a concern of yours, then just try googling how safe are lithium batteries. I think you'll find there's a ton of information online and most of that information will put your mind at rest. Thanks for the great suggestion and the good question. And yes, maybe I will put a smoke alarm underneath the bed in my van. After all, I do have a whole bunch of lithium devices stashed away under there, including my e-bike and a couple of battery packs as well. So as soon as I finish filming Waffle on a Wednesday, I think I'll be going down to the shops and getting myself an extra smoke alarm. Once again, thank you for the great suggestion. Really appreciate it. Now, whilst on the subject of smoke alarms and safety as such, Christine Walters sent this message to me just earlier on today. Hi Mel, I'm staying in a caravan that has a new diesel heater installed. A few days ago the battery died. While I had the heater running, I switched it off but because there was no battery power the heater did not go into cool down mode and the caravan filled with smoke. It's been sorted now and running fine but I noticed when I turn the heater on or off it now smells of fumes for a couple of minutes. I do need to switch the heater on and off every so often, therefore having to deal with the fumes a lot. Is the fumey smell on start up and shut down normal? I don't recall noticing it before the smoke incident. Well Christine, I would highly suggest you get that diesel heater looked at ASAP because you really shouldn't be able to smell any fumes at all, whether it's during start up or shut down. And maybe the reason you can smell those fumes when you first switch the diesel heater on is because the smell is actually unburnt fuel when it first starts up. And once the diesel heater is up to temperature and running, then that smell will kind of subside a bit. But I'd be really concerned that you still have a leak even though you can't smell anything after all carbon monoxide is odourless and it is also invisible so please do get that diesel heater sorted out 100% you should not be able to smell anything when you start it or shut it down for that matter and also check that you do have a carbon monoxide detector fitted in that caravan just in case but saying that if you really do need to use the diesel heater during the day then make sure your caravan is well vented but please do not use that diesel heater until you've got it checked at night do not go asleep with that diesel heater running i'd be really concerned for your welfare and if you do feel any abnormal effects if you feel unwell have a headache or anything like that stop using that heater right away and open all the windows in your caravan Thanks for getting in touch and thanks for the great question. Please stay safe. Now here's a really good comment that was left on my van tour video that I did this weekend. I'll put a link to that video up here if you haven't seen it. And one of those van tours had a CB radio in it. And I'd, I'd forgotten all about CB radios. And this is the comment that was left on that video. And this is by Mark Ford and he says, Re the CB radio. I don't know why the van life community don't embrace the CB more. It's a great way of keeping in touch with each other. And Antonia Bradley actually replied to this comment because it was her van tour yeah. that it was featured on because she had it up above the driver's seat. And she said, Van Life CB uses channel 24 FM. And there's also a Facebook group, but it's a bit quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit quiet. I've, I've got to admit, I haven't had a look at the Facebook group just yet, but I will do later on. And uh, I did have a look, however, on Amazon to see how much CB radios cost because I remember back in the day when I was a young lad, no, not during the war, <laughs> they were quite expensive. But I, like I say, I did look on Amazon and I think there's one on there, a miniature one, it was only like 55 quid. Yeah, it was really inexpensive. So I, I'm, I'm kind of toying with the idea of actually getting a CB radio for my van. I think it'll be a great idea. And also, yeah. the other thing is, if you're in a remote location, obviously your phone's not going to work. Yeah. Whereas so if a 
group of people have all got CB radios, then you can communicate chance. with each yeah. other. So it could be something that we, we should actually I look into. I think it's a brilliant idea. Let's have a CB radio revision, yeah. revival. I think that's great. So yeah, leave your comments down below. We really want to know your feedback on yeah. this. Van Life CB Radio Facebook page. Go check it out. I'm certainly yeah. going to. Yeah. Great question. Brilliant. And I'll try and find that Facebook group and I'll put a link in the description of this video if I can find it. But to save me looking and searching, if you know where that Facebook group is, then do leave a comment in the comment section and, s and leave a link to that Facebook group. Yeah. Save me searching. Or maybe Antonia, if you could do that, that would be great because obviously you are a member already. Yeah. So there you go. Drop it down in below. Tony, leave a link down below and I will share that link in the description of this video as and when you do. Yeah. Okay, this is more of a hypothetical question. It's from Mark Jones and he asks, if you weren't living in your van full time and needed it for commuting, but you wanted to do weekend trips, would you have a low roof like the transporter or a high roof and stay with the sprinter or would you go for a low roof and have a pop top? <laughs> Well, strangely enough, I did actually start my camper van in journey with a low roof. It was actually an old Volkswagen and it was fitted with a pop top. And I absolutely love that old van and it was perfect for commuting to and fro work and perfect for the weekends as well. But unfortunately, due to a financial situation I had to get myself out of, I was actually forced into selling that van to pay off some debts and some bills, but we won't go into that. And then I moved on to my old Volkswagen T4, which was a, what's commonly known as a tin top. And it was perfectly fine, again, perfect for commuting to and fro work and for the odd weekend away. I would actually highly recommend something like that for anyone that just wants to get away for the weekend because they are super easy to park, you don't have any problems getting underneath most restriction barriers and they are obviously cheaper to run as well so if you're going to use a van for commuting that's the perfect van for that perfect situation. However if you are considering building a van to live in full time then I would highly recommend a complete opposite and most definitely get a van you can stand up in. <laughs> Which is exactly what I'm not doing. Which is exactly what I've done. <laughs> but Rebecca is going the other way, she's got, a, she's buying a smaller van that you can't stand up in but I do believe you, you're planning on fitting a, a pop, pop top, top to that yeah. van as well. Yeah. But for me, I couldn't live full time in a van like that. In fact, my Sprinter is a medium wheelbase, high roof van, and it is just about big enough to live in full time. But a long wheelbase van, high top, would definitely be my recommendation if you're gonna live in a van full time. Mm. But like I said earlier, if you want a van for the weekend, get away then, a low roof van with a pop top would be absolutely perfect. Yeah. But if you can't get one with a pop top, then don't worry about it. It's <laughs> still just as good and you can still have just as much fun because I always say you don't actually live in your van, you live out of your van. And that's what I have to try and keep reminding myself to yeah. live out of my van rather than live in my van. Yeah, you don't have to have everything inside. No. <laughs> anyway, I hope that answers your question and good luck with whatever van you do decide to buy and build. So that's the time you've all been waiting for. That's this week's Troll of the Week. Roll that intro. Uh, it's not Rebecca, even though I'm pointing at her. <laughs> no, I'm not the troll. Troll of the week. Do you think you're selfish? England's got a drought problem with water, you know, and you just wasted it away. And that comment was left by Peter Haynes on the video that I made when I, I ended the video by having a bath in a big bathtub. Well, Peter, you do realise I actually live full time in my van and on a daily basis I use about roughly sometimes five litres of water maximum and if I do want to wash in my van I'll probably use another five litres. It's like a small amount. Yeah. So that's a tiny amount of water maximum daily I will use 10 litres of water in any one given day and that is absolute maximum. Most days I use about five litres of water so please forgive me if I have a bath once every two years. Because yeah. that's pretty that's much probably about the, the ratio. first time I've actually had a bath in two years, two years of living in my van. Yeah, so I think he's allowed a little bit of extra water to have a one bath. And it wasn't even like a bath in a house, it was in a bucket in the, it was in the side of the road. It was a big bucket at the side of the river and it was cold as well. <laughs> so here's a quick question. We love a quick question. Can you burn coal in the wood burner? And this is from Jonathan Pearson. Well Jonathan, no you can't burn coal in this wood burner, although I've got to admit I did try once because Rebecca's dad had some coal left over and I thought 
I'll have a go at that, see if it will burn. And in fact, it doesn't, it, will, it just goes out because after all, this is a wood burner, it's not a multi-fuel burner. So the short answer to your quick question is, no, you can't burn coal in the wood burner because it is a wood burner. Thanks for the quick question. Thanks for the great question. And thanks for the quick answer. Sorry about that. <laughs> By the way, I love this thing. Yeah. Okay, here's a good question from Ant-Man. Mel, I have a question. Do you have a first aid kit? And if so, what's in it? We love a question. <laughs> Sorry about that. First aid kit. Yes, I have a couple of first aid kits in my van. I've got a tiny little one that goes on your belt and I wear that when I'm out and about. Usually if I go to a breaker's yard or something because I did actually slice a finger once whilst I was in a breaker's yard. And since I did that, I bought this little pocket clip-on type first aid kit yeah it's good to have when you're out and about yeah, backpacking when, as well yeah so yeah i've uh, that first aid kit i've also got the standard mercedes benz first aid kit that's in the door pocket of my van and we actually had to lend that to somebody quite recently they yep. opened their sliding door and a gas bottle fell out and crushed their foot yep. and it did look really painful didn't it oh, so it was i was glad bad. i did have that first aid kit in my van and as a matter of fact it is a legal requirement to have a first aid kit in your vehicle if you travel to europe well there you go thanks for asking such great questions this week really do appreciate it <laughs> And if you enjoyed this video, found it mildly entertaining, slightly informative, then please do give us a thumbs up and we will see you next week. Thanks for watching. Ta-ra for now. Bye everyone. Bye. Stay safe. <laughs>